All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the dynamic array functions in Excel. And we're going to do it by comparing it to what the query function can do in Google Sheets. So that's going to give us, I think, a pretty good understanding of where Excel is at with uh, matching the abilities of Google Sheets to work in arrays. And I'm Adam Steinfurth. This is a prolific Oak Tree channel where we talk about spreadsheet stuff. On the left of your screen, this is a little Google Sheets window, right? And this worksheet I prepared probably two years ago, and it all is to show how the query function works. So I thought this was good unbiased data to use with Excel because I didn't design it just to show off the Excel arrays. And as we go through this, some ways that we have to do this in Excel are probably better than the query function. Some of them are about the same, and a few of them I just couldn't get to work. Okay, so let's just start going through them. And the first thing that we want to do is we're going to be, all of these examples, we'll be looking at this table of data. And let's first just say that, let's just return some values with matching words. In this case, let's just look at the um, items in the North warehouse, all right? So we want to do one formula, if possible, that returns this entire array as the result. So if I look over in uh, Google Sheets on the left-hand side, this um, is the formula that we used. They're, they're all the query function, and we won't go into it too much. I'll link to the video in the description. But the query function takes uh, the range. So the range is the same. It's this same data, A3 through D15. But then you give it a SQL instructions, uh, a set of SQL instructions. So this formula, which is probably why it didn't make its way into Excel, just guessing, uh, uses a totally different language. So you write it out um, in a way that bears no resemblance to any other formula in a spreadsheet. So there's a steep learning curve, but once you get it, it's very flexible. But what this is saying is, um, return all of the columns where column D is equal to north. So the nice thing about the SQL language is that you can kind of just read it. You really can't do that with spreadsheet functions as much, but we're going to use one. So let's come over to the right. We're going to uh, use one of the dynamic array functions available in Excel. Let me look at my little cheat sheet here. Uh, but the problem with this first one is that um, it can't return the header. Okay, so, um, well, it, it kind of can return the header, but it's not aware that it's different than the rest of the data. So if you try to sort or filter, it's also going to look at the header as if it's part of the uh, data in the table. So you just need to copy and paste it. That's an inherent limitation in the formula that we're going to use, and that is the filter function. So this is also available in Sheets, but uh, it is now in Excel as of a few years ago. And the filter function needs to know the array that it's starting with. So we will say it's this data in A4 through D15. All right, not that complicated so far. And after you do the array, then you need to give it the condition that we're looking to match. So what we want to do is whenever there's a the word north in column D, right? So you have to uh, give it the area. So we will say D4, the column, through D15. And it needs to be the same height as the rest of the table. And we will say equal to, and then we will use quotes because this is a text string as opposed to a number in those quotes and we're done with the formula. Let's hit enter. And we got all of the items that are in the North warehouse. And a way to check this for accuracy is just to go back over and see what we got with the query function. And it's the same. All right, so, so far we're able to do what the query function does. Let's come down to the second example that we had used. All right, and for this second example, what we're going to do is we're only going to return the rows that have less than 140 items. All right, so the items is going to be cases times amount per case. So let's, um, we need to copy the headers again. Filter function does not work with headers. Then we will just grab the old one that we had typed out to get a little bit of a head start. 
But instead of looking for the value of north and D, we're going to look to see when B times C is less than 140. So let's change this second part. We will just delete that. And we will say B4 through 15 times. So you'll notice this is one array times another array. So what this will do is go through every row. So it will start at row four, 11 times 12. Check that to see if it's the right amount. Then seven times 15, etc. So that amount, I'm looking at my key here. Okay, needs to be less than 140. We'll hit enter and all of these, if you take seven times 15, it must be less than 140. That's a lot of math to do in my head. Let's do this seven times 15. All right, it's 105. And if I check it to what we did with Google Sheets, so this is the formula, and we just said where B times C is less than 140, it's a little bit easier to read. Um, it gave us the same result. All right, so let's now move on to the third example. I'm gonna move this data down so it follows us. It's a little bit easier to see. And now we're going to take, we're still going to use the dynamic array functions, but we're going to add a new column based on a calculation that we've done and put a label on it. So this does get trickier, it's still possible you can still conceptualize what we're doing here. It's not an incredibly long formula, but it's not as graceful as the query formula. So I'll show you what we mean. So if I look at how we did it with query, we uh, took the source table and we said, return columns A, B, and C. So we can just use the letters. We don't have to specify row numbers. And then B times C, still pretty easy to read. And then put a label on B times C and call it total. And then the even more important, well, not more important, but another important part is when you're done with that, hey, the first row, one row here is a header. So the query function can recognize headers and deal with them appropriately. So let's come over to example three. I am going to take a quick look at how I did it here. You know what? I'm just gonna grab that. So for example three, Ah, we used a function. Now we're able to dynamically generate this header. Let's talk about it. We'll put this over here. Let me make a quick adjustment. All right, so let's look at the functions that we're putting together here for this formula. We have used a relatively new function called hstack, which makes a horizontal stack of items. And then we fed into that the data that we want. So the first thing that we did was say, Hey, just take the range A23 through D35. Okay, so that's this entire table. Return that as is. So that is this first portion here. But then we want to tack on our cal cal <laughs> calculated column. And we did that by putting the row label on top. So this V stack function that we nested inside the H stack says, I'm going to give you more than one item, stack them on top of each other. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is take the string called total, put it in row 24. So you're going to see that after I hit enter, and then return the array of B20 of B times C. Okay, let's hit enter. This is that label that we create. So this is the original table returned as is. This is the label that we created. And then the vstack function stacked it on top of this calculation. Not as graceful as a query function. Let's come over and look And all the query function did was talk about it. It said, hey, take this table, select the three original columns, then do B times C and label it total. I think the query function wins here. However, this uh, combination of hstack and vstack is usable. You'll get by, you can definitely use it in Excel, and that's how to add a calculated and labeled column. But there was one part where I got stuck here. If you know how to do this, please leave a comment and let me know. But the next thing that I did with the query function a few years ago when I put this together was that I then applied a filter to it. So I said where B times C is less than 140. Can figure out how to do that in Excel. So we're just going to leave that blank. We're going to give one 
uh, win here to Google Sheets. The next example, I also could not do in Excel. What I wanted, this was another one where we embedded a calculation in it. So we did another filter where B times C is less than 140 and where D equals North. So two conditions, one of them being a calculated condition, couldn't figure out how to do it. Now, by saying couldn't figure it out, I could find a very long formula, right? I could ask um, Claude or Gemini or, or whatever, and, and it will give me a formula, but it's not really a human readable formula. So when you're using those, it's hard to maintain them or change them or explain them. So those don't count. We're only talking about uh, reasonable formulas here. So this example four also is not doable in Excel. So we will move on and we will talk about how we can sort and limit the responses. All right, so we were able to do this with query by saying order by C, okay, put it in order by the values in column C, and then, oh, descending. Uh, so we're going to order it in descending order, but we're going to limit the number of responses to five. We can do that in Excel. Let's go grab that. So this is example five, and then we will talk about it. This can't handle headers, so we had to just grab the data. I copy and pasted the headers. But what we'll do here is start with a function that's new to me called the take function, and that just takes the first X number of rows. So I said take, and then uh, sorted the data, and I just said take the first five rows. So that's what this five is as the second argument to take. So we say take first five rows of and then we use the sort function. So I believe this is the first time we've used a sort function in this video. And what that does is it takes an array or a table of data and sorts it by whatever column you designate it and then outputs it. Okay, so we said sort it by the third column. So in this case, it wants an index number instead of uh, saying A, B, or C, or D. And uh, do it in opposite order. So that's the negative one. So when we hit enter, we get this beautiful little output here, which is the same as we were able to do with the query function in Sheets. All right, not bad. Next little example, and this, I did do this several years ago. I didn't set this up, but Excel now has an elegant solution for this, that if you know the function, it's probably a little bit easier than the query function. So take that, Google Sheets. We're gonna say example six, grouping data, all right, so the group by function is a pretty new function in Excel. It's newer than sort and filter. And what it does is it can just group data, believe it or not, by a function that you designate. So it can sum the number of items. It can average the number of cases. It will just do this in one dimension. It doesn't create a pivot table, but it does create groups. So what we will do with it, uh, I'll also link to a video about just the group by function uh, because it is, it's actually a pretty interesting dynamic function, if you will. We will, uh, for group by, it wants the row fields. So we will say, hey, we wanna group it by items and we go, want to show, the values that we want to show in our groups are the number of cases. You'll notice each of these has the header in the range uh, how we want to group them. So you need to tell it how to aggregate the data. Let's just do the sum function. Well, that's what I did before. So let's do it again. That's what I did in sheets. And now we can specify whether or not the row fields have headers. So for this, we designated a three. Let me delete that to see if it gives me the list. Yeah. So there are several options here. You can say, no, there's no headers. Yeah, it has headers, but I don't want you to show them. No, but generate them. We will say, yes, it has headers because we have those in our selection and do show them. So that's what a three is. We will click on that. And then the total depth is, it's going to take out, um, there'll be no subtotals or totals. That's what a zero does there. We'll hit enter. And here we go, it grouped it by items. So there's seven cases of hammers. There's 11 cases of nails. Is that right? Let's see, hammers, seven. Yeah, nails, 11. And if we look at our data here, it's the same.
So the query function, kind of long there when you compare it to Excel's group by function. <laughs> Actually, they're probably about the same size. But the advantage of the group by function is that it's using a syntax that you're familiar with. It works like any other spreadsheet function. So if you're never in Google Sheets, uh, the group by function, you'll never know what am I even saying right now. It's familiar. It's similar to the way the other ones work. All right, so example seven. Last thing that we're going to do that you are able to do with the query function that's pretty um, a nice replacement for pivot tables or a substitute for them is that you can uh, pivot your data, right? So in the query function, you can say, hey, let's do column A and the sum of B and use a group by clause, group by A, and then pivot it by D. So you have to combine group and pivot. In this previous one, we had just used group. Okay, so here you have to use the SQL language, right, with multiple clauses. But in Excel, I'm going to grab it from here. And I'll adjust it. So give me one quick moment. I right, said so in Excel, what you can do is use a function called the pivot by function. Also a pretty new function it came out with group by. And pivot by takes row fields. So we said the row fields would be the items. So you see those labeling each row here. But it also takes column fields. So those will be the labels at the top. And that will be the warehouse. You'll see that when I hit enter. And then the values again are the cases and I'm summing them. So let's hit enter. And here we go. You get this nice little pivot. It's the same as the query function produced, but with a more understandable function. So there are some advantages to not having the query function. You get some of these other spreadsheet functions that you're familiar with. And if you want to learn more about the pivot by function, take a look at this next video. Thanks for watching.